The origins of quilting. Quilting is as old as the hills, and for many, has that wonderful combination of domestic necessity, social cohesion, and craftwork and commemoration. Quilting methods don't vary enormously throughout the world, but the designs are largely specific to a country or a society, although the traditional American patchwork designs have become loved worldwide. It is wonderful to have such a craft, which is a means of handing down traditions amongst women folk mainly, and which has an end product that can both look beautiful and keep you warm at night. An exception to this is of course the Hawaiian quilting tradition, which began under the tutelage of the missionaries and evolved into a means of recording the Hawaiian beliefs and lives. Their quilts talk of their gods, their departed spirits, the new members of their society yet to be born, and the main historical and cultural events of their society. Their use of the beautiful flowers and the love of their culture gives Hawaiian quilting a truly magical and precious quality. In colder climates, the quilting circle was an opportunity for the women to come together, to talk over the major matters of the day, and to provide invaluable support for each other. The new settlers in the United States of America were hardy and tough. Most of them had to start from scratch. Homes had to be built and furnished, and in these days, nearly everything had to be grown or made. Needlework was a very necessary skill for a woman. Without this, they would not be able to make their clothes, and would not be able to make the soft furnishings that not only make a house into a home, but are necessary for keeping out drafts from windows and doors, and for keeping everyone warm at night. When societies became more established and there was money and time available, the quilting circle would make quilts to commemorate certain events and together produce really large quilts that would adorn the walls of the buildings that served as community centers. And of course, the social network was invaluable. The older women would pass on their skills as needlewomen and designers of quilts and other crafts. More importantly, they would pass on invaluable knowledge about family life. Childbirth, medicines for common ailments, cooking, and how to grow herbs and vegetables. This was the subtext and the very important function of the quilting circle. Clearly in different times and different places, the women would have different topics that would dominate the quilting circle's conversations. The quilting circle was commonplace. It was necessary, it was helpful and social, and it produced wonderful pieces of work for individuals and for communities. These days, many women live in relative social isolation. Perhaps more so within the much more heavily populated urban environments where most of us live. Maybe we should rekindle the spark and start new quilting circles everywhere. Thank you for watching another Unstoppable Intellect video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help keep the channel growing. Knowledge is power. Together, we'll make you truly unstoppable.